can ask questions during the recording. Uh, but this is the recording for Project 3 in the Typography class for our Spring 2016 semester. What we just did is we uh, typeset the copy that was found on page 110. We typeset it in Microsoft Word. And in addition, we added the year 1769 AD. And that is not what is in the book. But I put that in there because we're going to learn how to deal with numbers. So they look like they're not, well, we don't want them to look like capital letters like this. We don't want them to stick out so badly. And we're going to learn about acronyms, how to set acronyms. This really would be uh, capital A and D, but the small capitals, not the big capitals. So this is why I have 1769 AD there, is because there was nothing in the text that had the numbers or a, an a, at what's called an acronym. An acronym is an abbreviation for, um, uh, uh, if you say NASA, uh, that's the National Aeronautics Space, what is that one? What is NASA's thing? Well, I don't, now I'm proving my ignorance across the world because I'm going to put it on YouTube, but NASA is an acronym for longer words. And I'm sorry my head is not thinking of NASA right now. Okay, so we typeset this and we saved it as, I just called it Project 3 Body Copy. Now, according to the instructions here and in the book, uh, we want to create a 10 inch by 10 inch document according to the instructions on Blackboard in the book. And we are going to set, we have an example here of what we're doing. We're going to set um, our first text box at Garamond, just regular. 11 points is the size of the type and 13 points the letting. Then 20 picas is how wide we're making the column or the, the text box. And it wants it in normal or default word spacing or letter spacing. Okay, so that's the first thing we're going to do. We're going to create a 10 inch by 10 inch document. So I'm going to open InDesign and I'm going to uh, go to New Document. Command N is what I would use for this. Command N. Um, in the New Document panel, you want to turn off facing pages because this is not a booklet or brochure or anything. So turn that off. I have preview on at the moment. I'm going to, that'll slow this down a little bit. I'm going to turn that off. And this is not a letter. This is 10 inches by 10 inches. How many, how many picas are in 10 inches? 60. Oh my gosh, you guys are smart. 60 picas. So I can do 60 by 60 picas. Or if I type 10 I in, that'll give me 60 picas. Um, margins, let me see if it states anything about any margins. Uh, I don't believe it really does. Nope. It says, it says using Garamond 11 over 13 by 20 to picas. Set the paragraph from page 111. We want it flush, left, ragged, right. Oh, with the date 1769 AD added. Now, it may not say that in the book, but it says it here. Uh, we'll set several of the same paragraph in Roman, italic, bold, italic, comma, bold, all caps, uh, and caps with small caps. We'll also set an additional two more type back boxes. This is not in the book. This is something additional we added. Uh, we'll also set two more text boxes with the Roman typeface, uh, with a Roman typeface. One will be tight word spacing, and the other one with uh, uh, tight letter spacing. One with lining figures, and the other with old style figures. And we're also going to use no hyphenation. Okay, now there's another thing that is in here, um, which is uh, adding, let me show you this. So this, this is um, tight word spacing here. This is tight letter spacing. Then I have a discussion about free fonts. You guys, I know you all love getting free fonts from like defont.com, but they're always really badly letter spaced and word spaced. So I don't mind if you use the free fonts, you just have to know how to use them. So we uh, actually set a free font. This is the before free font and the after free font as far as changing its uh, letter and word spacing. One is a little bit easier to read than the other. Okay, so this is... Uh, we're ready to go. Let's go 10 inches by 10 inches. I'm going to leave the margins at three picas, which is a half an inch, and I'm going to leave the columns at one for now. We're going to hit OK, and we should have a square that's 10 inches by 10 inches or 60 picas by 60 picas. Where did you leave the margins at? I just left them at three picas. Okay, and then on the width, you said it was six or? Uh, the, the, uh, uh, the document uh, is 60 pica by 60 pica, the width and height. So uh, for width, it's 60 pica. For height, it's 60 pica. And did you change the letter? You said 
Yeah, it will automatically change as soon as you put 60 by 60 in there. It'll put the word custom there. It'll do it automatically. It'll change it from letter size paper to custom. Okay, so we should have a square. Now we're going to place this text that we just typeset in Word. So that would be, whoa, that was fun. I don't know what happened there. So that would be a file and place, which is command D. I always usually do that when I'm not teaching and I don't have to speak what I'm doing. But file, place, command D. I'm going to go find my project three folder I created and the project three body copy that I typeset. And when I find that, I hit open, which is in essence meaning OK, and it will tell me that, oh, if you typeset it in Word and you use the default Calibri, Calibri, I don't even know how to say that one. I don't know where to put the emphasis on the syllable on this one. But Calibri, uh, it's telling me it's missing. <coughs> I don't care. I close this because <coughs> I'm going to switch this up to Garamond anyway. So I'm going to zoom in so we can see just a little bit better. And let me go back to file place because when you zoom, if you already had a loaded cursor, it gets rid of that. Okay, here we go. Um, what we can do is um, we're going to be setting multiple text boxes, but I'm going to click and drag a very long text box and uh, go all the way from the top pink line to the bottom pink line. That's the margin area. And when I do that, it's going to import the text and make a long text box. Now, according to the instructions, it said that this text box needed to be how many picas wide? 20. Right now, it's a random number because I clicked and dragged. But up here in the width, you want to change whatever number that is, assuming it's not 20. You want to change that to 20. You don't even have to type in the P. It understands you want picas. Okay. Now I'm going to zoom into that area because that's the area I'm going to be working with. Oh, I see hyphens. Did it not say no hyphens? I think it did say no hyphens. I see hyphens. So while I see hyphens, I'm going to solve that problem and get rid of them. Can we remember how to get rid of hyphens? Go to the P button, which is the paragraph formatting controls in the control panel. Uncheck hyphenate. There you go. Cool thing is I didn't have to have the whole paragraph even selected. It understood that it wants that paragraph unhyphenated. As long as my cursor was in there, it understood that that paragraph is not hyphenated. Now let me tell you something though. I'm going to copy and paste this paragraph again. I want to share with you something. These are two different paragraphs. If I have my cursor in this paragraph and I say no hyphenation, it will not assume that you want no hyphenation in the whole document. You see how the second paragraph it still has hyphens? Mm -hmm. This only affects the paragraph you're in or the paragraph you selected, okay? So I just want to let you know that just because you click on the no hyphenation button, well that's just for the paragraph you're in unless you have all of them selected. Now, according to the instructions, the first one is supposed to be set, sorry I'm zooming in around here, 11 over 13 and uh, flush left ragged right and in Roman or regular. So did I load my fonts? Well, let me see. What font came with this? Now we have to be careful. I'm going to look at the assignment and see which font came with it. Okay, Garamond Pro. Okay, that's the one we're using this time. In previous assignments, we used a different Garamond. So don't let this trick you. Garamond Pro. I'm going to go to my suitcases folder. And I don't see Garamond Pro in here because um, I, didn't, I didn't load it. Maybe you did load it, uh, but I haven't loaded it yet. So do not use ITC Garamond STD because that's a different one. So I'm going to go and I'm going to download my Garamond Pro. I'm on Blackboard clicking on that little attach file and I'm saying uh, I'm going to go to save link as and assuming I've created a project 3 folder, I'm going to put that in there. Okay, so we got that downloaded. And now I'm going to load Garamond Pro, but I have to unzip it. It's a zipped file. So let me double click on it. It will unzip. And I will, oops, excuse me. I will drag Garamond Pro 
not the zip one, but the one that's been unzipped, that folder. I'll grab it and take it to my suitcase fusion, and then I'm going to activate it, okay? I clicked to the very left in the blank area by the star, and I activated just Garamond Pro. Okay, if I don't act activate Garamond Standard, then that will be one less thing I have to be confused about. Okay, Garamond Standard will not be available in InDesign until I activate it, so I'm not going to activate it. Now I'm going to go back to InDesign. I've I've downloaded Garamond Pro. I have unzipped it and loaded it. It is. It's also in this week's stuff under Project Three. Uh -huh. It's it's right here in Project Three Type Styles. That little attached file right there. Is it the same one that? You it is the same one I gave you guys earlier. Um, I know I included Garamond Pro, and I never got to it. Um, so I know I included Garamond Pro before. So if you have Garamond Pro loaded. Uh, from before you can use that one. That one is the same. Okay, good questions. Okay, so um, can anybody tell me how to how to grab this entire paragraph without clicking and dragging? Four clicks. One, two, three, four. Excellent. Okay, uh, to get to Garamond Pro, right now I'm in the backwards P, which is paragraph formatting controls up here. I want to be in the A button. I want to have character formatting control, so I click there. <coughs> now, I need to find Garamond Pro, and these are in alphabetical order. Uh, now, keep in mind that sometimes, um, even though they're in al alphabetical order, this thing's jumping around all over the place. Um, pardon me while I let it jump here. When I get to the G's in Garamond, It says Adobe Garamond Pro. Okay? So even though they're in alphabetical order, the word Adobe before it can throw you off if you're looking for, you know, looking for the beginning letter. So if I uh, extend the choices that I have for Garamond Pro by clicking on this little rec or uh, re uh, what is that? A triangle. I'm going to choose regular because that's what it told me that I needed to do for this par first paragraph. So Garamond Pro regular and what point size did it tell us? 11. It didn't say 12. So in your point size, which is the top number next to a symbol that has a little t and a big t, both caps, you want to get that and type in 11. <coughs> and then the letting is a number underneath it. What was the letting amount? 13. 13. It wasn't auto letting, which is the stuff with the parentheses. So now we have Adobe Garamond Pro set 11 over 13. Flush left, rag right. Let me go and see on Blackboard. Make sure I've got everything correct there. A Garamond 11 over 13 by 20. Set the paragraph. Flush left, rag and right. And the date, uh, with the date, as 1769. It says we'll set several of the same paragraph for the following type styles. So the first one was Roman or regular. Uh, the next one's going to be italic, and then bold, and then uh, small ca all caps and small caps. Um, so now I've got to figure out all of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this paragraph, which would be four clicks, and we're going to copy it. What's the keyboard shortcut for copy? Command C. Command C for copy. I could go all the way up here to go to edit and copy, but that takes a while. Command C. Command C, copy. I'm going to put my cursor at the end of that paragraph, and then I'm going to hit the return key twice. Okay? I'm going to paste it. So it should look exactly identical to the paragraph above it, at least right now. Now it told us that this one needed to be, let's see, where am I? It said I've already done the Roman one. That was the first one. The next one needed to be italic. Okay. So for italics, the style is found underneath the name. So we have the name Adobe Garamond Pro up in the character control panel up here. And underneath it, it says regular, which is also some people call that Roman. But we have a choice there of italic. So we're going to use that because that's what it says to use it. So there's, there's Garamond 11 over 13 italic. <clears throat> Does it look like... Uh, does it look like the example on Blackboard? 
Oh yeah, it sure does. There's a little bit more space between them, but we can deal with that in a minute. The next one they say to make it bold. So guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to hit the return key a couple of times after that paragraph and paste again. Control V is, or I'm sorry, we're on Mac. Command V is paste. Four clicks to get the paragraph and we're going to make this one bold. So in the style of the typeface, which says, maybe it says regular talc depending on which one you copied, we're going to choose bold. Okay, so there's that one. Now, the next one, it tells us to make it all caps. Oh, you mean I have to hold down the caps lock and retype this whole thing over again? No, no. You don't have to do that. I'm pasting it again. This is the fourth time. Fourth one. Again, four clicks gets the whole paragraph. And up here on the control panel, you'll have all caps and superscript and underlined and small caps and so on. Well, in this case, we're using all caps. We just click those two, the button with the two big T's. This is right next to the type size, uh, just to the right of that field. And if you float your cursor over it, it'll tell you all caps. Okay, that's what I want. Wow, that took up a lot more space. By the way, it takes people to read all caps type all caps type, it takes them uh, longer to read that than it does upper and lower case. Because all the letters look the same, they're all the same height, they roughly take up the same width, so it slows down readability. Whereas upper and lower case, we look at the word almost as a symbol in and of itself. Do you, I mean, none, most of us don't pronounce love out. We don't now go, uh, uh, v, love, okay. We look, at, we look at the word love or boat, especially shorter words, and we just think of them almost as like little miniature word pictures anyway. We don't even read, sound it out anymore. Well, it's a little harder to do that when it's all caps. Okay, I'm going to hit the return key twice, and I'm going to paste this one more time. And this one we are making, uh, uh, we're going to make it what's called small caps. Ooh, I just clicked and dragged, didn't I? Did you guys see that? I clicked and dragged. Bad me, bad habit. Four clicks. Clicking and dragging is... That's old news. Now, instead of all caps, we're going to use the next one underneath it. <coughs> we're going to use small caps. What small caps does is the, the, uh, the actual capital letters are capital height, but the rest of the letters are the height of the X height, the height of the lowercase x of uh, something that might be upper and lowercase. So they look smaller. Ooh, and look how sexy these numbers just got. Look at that. See that? That is called old style non-lining numbers. It, it brings unwanted emphasis to the numbers in that it looks like they have ascenders and descenders. Okay, so if you have numbers that's in, that are in body copy, uh, they should be set like this. Now, unfortunately, when I'm up here, they're not. Now, that being said, guess what we should do? We should highlight, this will be clicking and dragging. In the first paragraph we worked on, we need to highlight 1769 AD, and guess what we need to do? We need to click on small caps. Oh, doesn't that look so much better? They don't, they're not sticking out like sore thumbs anymore. So you can look between the regular one and the italic one. 1769 is going, 1769, and the rest of the copy is kind of quiet. And we want it to quiet down, so we're going to highlight that and make it small caps. Oops, the 1769 didn't do what it was supposed to do. Oh, shame on it. we got to figure out what's going on there. It automatically did it here, and that's quite lovely. But what's going on here? It's probably a glyph in the italics that might be missing. We're not sure. But let me take you to a... I call it the... I, I'm, I know this is bad that I talk about toucan salmon as horrible, horrible cereal, with, cereal with bad food coloring and lots of sugar. But they used to have this Toucan Sam secret decoder thing. And so there's this little button off here on the side that nobody uses way up here on the control panel on the far right. Nobody uses it. Nobody knows what it's for. I mean, I know what it's for. I use it all the time. But it's so quiet out there. We'll click on that little button. It's got uh, three or four lines and a little arrow next to it. And I'm going to go to open type with that 1769 highlighted. I'm going to see if I can set this so that it is uh, old style. Uh, non-lining. In this case, it might be proportional old style. 
Oh, fixed it. There it was. Proportional old style. Again, how I did that was I highlighted 1769 because that was the one giving me the problem. I went to the flyout menu at the far right of the control panel, what I like to call the Toucan Sam secret decoder button. And I went to the topmost item says open, to open type, and I chose proportional old style, and it turned those letters into the non-lining old style that are in proportion to upper and lowercase combination. Looks so much nicer. Uh, that I'm in the italics one because when I did the italics, it didn't put them in proportional old style like it did automatically with the uh, non-italic, and I had to work harder for that one. Oh, so let's let's review that for just a second. I'm going to go back and make this just plain old normal, and I'm going to show you what it looked like initially. Whoops, let me. I'm trying to mess it back up here. Okay, I hate when I can't mess something up. There we go. Okay, if it didn't do it on any of them, like mine magically did it here. I was surprised it did. If it, do it didn't do it on any of the 1769 ADs, highlight those, make them small caps first and see if it'll do it. If it does, then great. And if it doesn't, after you make it small caps, then you have to go to the flyout menu on the control panel on the far right. Click on that little booger there, that little icon. Go to open type and go proportional old style. So it's small caps and proportional old style. Oh, so that's how they get those typographic little nuances taken care of. Yep, that's how they do it. So these things are actually important when you're studying typography. And you guys are going, oh my gosh, is this all about splitting hairs and doing the littlest things right? Well, yeah, kind of it is. Uh, it is. It is making sure that we have typographic savvy and we're doing things correctly. Yeah, you got a story? Oh no. So he had me go into Photoshop and reconstruct his name. Photoshop. This is why we don't do layouts in Photoshop. Well, well. But yeah, they kept the text layer though. I was editing the actual document. Oh, like, okay. I was taking like it was hilarious. I was like, I could just like feel the back thing on my shoulder. Going, yep. Words matter. Spelling yep, words matters. matters. <laughs> yep. Um, you'll notice that in the bold version, the 1769 was not doing what it was supposed to do, even though I clicked on the small cap stuff. The AD looked good. You know, it went from lowercase AD to a nice small caps AD, but 1769 is still that big whopper, looks like it's all caps. So I have to go out here again and the flyout menu on the control panel, go to open type and proportional old style. Now that is sexy. That is just beautiful. Typographically speaking, of course. Uh, in the all caps, I'm not going to worry about it because that's all caps and it's all supposed to all be yelling at us. You know, it's all supposed to say, say be about the same height all the way across. Um, and then in the small caps one here, it automatically did it for me. If it didn't for you, um, highlight it, go out to the flyout menu, go to open type and say proportional old style. Ooh, I like that even better. It kerned it a little bit. The proportional, it made it a little bit more proportional. Okay, so this is all extremely exciting so far, isn't it? Now, what I might do is to, uh, I'm zooming out a little bit. You can hit Command and Minus if you wanted to zoom out, but make sure you can still see the words. I might add a couple of extra spaces between these just to space them out. Uh, in the uh, document. I don't want everything all crowded. You know how I love to balance out the white space. So I'm trying to balance out the white space a little bit by putting extra returns in there. Just so it'll look good. Oh, I just hit Command S because I was like, oh, I'm going to save this. And I hadn't saved it yet. <laughs> Oops. So I need to find my Project 3 folder and I need to save this as uh, Project 3. I'll, I'll rename it my name here in a little bit. But I want to save that in design file because I've worked pretty hard at it so far. So it looks like I'm almost halfway done with the project. Fabulous. 
Now, the next thing I'm going to be doing, oh, I should put my name on it. Oh, let's not forget that. In fact, uh, if you want to, we can pull this down a, a little bit. There, doesn't that look not so crowded? I just pulled this down so it wasn't hugging up the top. That looks lovely. Uh, we're going to get the type tool, and I don't care what corner it is, but somewhere near the corner, upper left or upper right, you want to go ahead and type your name because, not mine, but yours, because when you print this out and give it to me, I'll know that it belongs to you. Okay? I don't care what font, if it's Minion Pro, which is the default, that's fine. I don't care what size, as long as it's just not overtaking the page. Just an identifier as to this belongs to you. All right, now the fun begins. This is something that most of you have not been exposed to, even if you've had an intro to computer graphics class. We're going to deal with word, word spacing and letter spacing. <coughs> word spacing and letter spacing are, are just that. They're spaces between words or spaces between letters. So super easy definition there. Uh, I do need to draw another te text box here. Okay, I'm going to make it 20 pike as wide as well. So make sure that it's 20 pike as wide. You can draw it first and then tell it to be 20 pike as wide. And I am going to paste in here that same text I've been using. I just hit Command V because it still remembered what I had. So I paste the text in the second column. Now we might we might make these nice and organized here. Uh, I like things organized. You know, that's so I just selected both of them and kind of moved them so they're nice and centrally organized. So if they feel a little left heavy, move them a little to the right. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to type something in InDesign. Normally I don't like to type in InDesign because it doesn't have great grammar or spell check. It's got spell check but no grammar. And we're going to uh, type just like it says here on this example. We're going to put the words, and I'll, I'll just hold down the caps lock for now, tight word spacing. And then hit the return key so it's a separate line. <clears throat> now, for body copy, we don't normally have to adjust word spacing or letter spacing unless we need to work with uh, killing widows and orphans and reflow a little bit. Um, this doesn't have any widows right now or orphans. Um, let's do, um, so we're going to uh, adjust the, the, the space between the words. Um, now, right now it's actually pretty good, but we're going to do it just to see what this does. So highlight that paragraph by clicking on it four times. And we're going to go back out to that decoder button, that secret little flyout menu off to the side. <coughs> and if we need to adjust word spacing or letter spacing, we would go to this area. <clears throat> but you don't see the words word spacing or letter spacing here. You don't see that at all. Well, we usually are most concerned about word spacing and letter spacing when we justify the copy. So it is under justification. Now, what I usually do is I move that around so I can see my paragraph and see how it affects my paragraph, these things I'm about ready to do. Now, what word spacing does is the the desired word spacing is 100%, but if it's justified copy, we it may go as little as 80% of the space between the words or as much as 133 space between the words. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust these numbers by 20%. So let's start with our minimum at 60% and see what happens. Hit the preview key and you'll see nothing really happens. Let's go to desired and take that down 20%. Let's take it to 80%. Oh, there, it just adjusted the word spacing. Things are flowing a little differently. And then for the maximum, let's take 20% off of that. And let's type in, uh, oh, 20% would be uh, 113. Thank you. Hit the tab key. And OK, that's what it has. What's that? The minimum is 60. The desired is now 80. And the maximum is 113. Yeah, from way back there, it's hard to see. Does it say it in the What's that? Where, how do you, where does it say that that it? it doesn't say. This is something I've actually added to the assignment. 
So this is not in the, I don't think it's, I, I'd have to look the book. And you know why I left my book in my office? That's not a very good place for it. I don't think it's in the book. Uh, they just have you set Garamond. Oh, yeah, this is extra. This is the extra stuff that no book tells you about, but professionally we need to know it. And I always have students run across this problem where they need to adjust the word spacing or letter spacing, and they can't do it because they don't know where to go. And they try to do it manually, which is a nightmare. Can you imagine adjusting the spaces between these words manually? Oh, and you had 100 pages of it? Oh, so there's an automated feature. I'm going to hit OK on this. And let's justify this text. I know in the example it doesn't show it justified, but, but how would we just make this justified align with a keyboard shortcut? Shift, Command, J. Shift, Command, J for justified. <coughs> Yay! Now, when you have justified a type, it's a bigger problem, this whole word spacing and letter spacing. What's that? Mine looks gorgeous and yours is not. Is that right? Mine is bigger. It's probably because I'm justified. Are you still just, are you justified? Uh, yeah. Oh. Hmm. Are you Garamond? Yeah, you're Garamond. Hmm. Should we change the number at the end? Oh, yes, always. Seppi does going, hey, what about that 1769 AD? Should we do the same thing that we did the others? Yes, ma'am, we should. Make it small caps, and if it makes it non-lining, we're done. If it doesn't, you have to go fly off to the side and make it proportional old style. By the way, non-lining and proportional old style or old style are the same, uh, they mean the same thing. So you'll hear me say non-lining, and Alicia's going, why is mine not doing what yours is doing? So I'm going to run back there. But yeah, proportional or old style and non-lining are the same thing. Into, and I see it a couple times when I'm looking around the room. Is um, yours doesn't look like mine? Maybe perhaps because you forgot to set that second column of text as 20 pipes wide. It's actually there when you zoom in a whole bunch. You'll see it. It just does that to make the computer run more efficiently. So it doesn't draw things as clearly when you do that. If it drew them real clearly. It, it'd run a little slow. Oh, Let me, let me show you. Uh, we had a question. We have a couple questions, but in this um, justification area, Dom was asking, what's auto letting? Well, I was asking what's the value that you give them. The value is at 120. That's, that's a computer that default. That is normal. Um, you can specify any, um, any number in there, but the normal one is about 120. That's how much letting is between the lines of type. We typically don't use auto letting anyway. We set a number. Okay, guys. Now there has been there is some confusion sometimes. Um, I do move quickly, and I apologize for that. Uh, sometimes I have the selection tool selected versus the type tool selected, and when when those are selected, you have different options up here. 
So if I have the type tool selected, I have the A for character formatting and the P for paragraph. But if I'm talking about, if I'm trying to make this box 20 picas, I need to use the black arrow tool, the selection tool, and you'll notice that there's no A or backwards P anymore. This deals with the width and height of the box. So this is really confusing because these don't look enough different when you toggle between the tools. It can be very confusing. So make sure that with the black arrow tool selected, you click on your text box, not the type tool. Don't double click because it'll turn into the type tool. Click on it one time and make sure your width is 20 picas on each one of these. Okay? So I did see around the room there's a, uh, there a little bit of a, a mess up there. I'm sorry this isn't big enough, but the width, it says W here for width. Type in 20 picas. But this is, again, with a black arrow tool selected, the direct selection tool. I'm sorry, the selection tool. <coughs> and people are going, yours is flowing differently than mine. And I think that might be the biggest issue is this needs to be 20 picas wide. So we would choose it with a black arrow tool and type in 20 for the width. Okay, so we tighten up the, the word spacing. Now I'm going to go back to uh, flush left, ragged right. So what's flush left? What's the keyboard shortcut, rather, for flush left? Shift, Control, L, uh, Shift, Command, L on a Mac. Shift, Control, L on a PC. There we go. Shift, Command, L. So I just wanted to see what it looked like between the justified setting and the flush left setting. I was curious. Now, we are going to set this again. Um, I'm going to hit return a few times, three times. I'm going to paste it again. Now I'm going to type the words tight whoops, letter spacing. Now I know it seems weird to have the words word spacing and letter spacing as all one word. Uh, if you were to type that in Microsoft Word, it'll tell you that's spelled incorrectly. But in the typography world, word spacing, letter spacing are often spelled without a space between them, ironically. Um, so that is technically correct. Now, we're going to mess this up pretty badly here. I am going to set the word spacing, or excuse me, the letter spacing so tight that the letters are going to start touching one another. But I want you to understand what this does. So I have the paragraph that I have, uh, this most recent paragraph I've set under now what's called tight letter spacing. I have that selected with the type tool. I go to the flyout menu again on the type control panel. <clears throat> And I'm going to go to justification. I'm going to do tight letter spacing. Now, we need to move from word spacing, which is the first row. We need to come down to the next row, which is letter spacing. Now, I'm going to set the same number for all of them, but it's going to be a negative number because I want to take out some spacing. So I'm going to start out with negative 30, and I'm going to put it in all of them, and you will see how tight this gets. Now, if you are trying to get a line of type to move up to, like maybe you can only afford four, four lines of type of, of space versus five, well, maybe you adjust the letter spacing and even possibly the word spacing. So this was five lines of type, now it's four. I'm gonna hit okay. The only problem is these letters start to touch one another, and if, a, if it's somebody who is older and their eyes are going, or somebody who's younger and beginning to read, uh, they might make more new characters out of combined characters. So this is really hard on folks. Okay, what I want you guys to do is save what you're doing, back it up. Classes, it's 353 now, I just realized uh, we're over. I don't want to run over. And we will continue talking about this on Wednesday at the beginning of class. So have this file ready Wednesday at the beginning of class. It doesn't need to be done because I haven't shown you the last two things. But at Wednesday, the beginning of class, have it this far, and then we'll carry on to the last two little things. We'll print it, we'll cut it, and we will turn it in. Okay? On word spacing, on justification, the numbers I used for the tight word spacing, this is the first one, the numbers I used were 60 for the minimum, then 80 for the desire, and 113 for the maximum. So 
I tightened up the word spacey. What are the bottom parts for justify? It's, it's not noun for justify, but why are you Hold on, just a second. As, as you're leaving, I'd like to sign out as soon as I can find my sign out sheet for today. Uh, oh, there it is. As you're leaving, go ahead and sign out. Um, and then, I'm sorry, let me get, let me finish uh, Sandra's question. Uh, so, Sandra, word spacing for the top one was 60, 80, and 113. For the tight letter spacing, it was, you've got to move down to letter spacing, and it's negative 30 all the way across. So, minimum, desired, maximum. I put number uh, minus 30 on all three of those. Minus 30, I mean, like minus 30 yeah. On line spacing, or letter spacing, rather. And you hit OK and save it. Now, Sepida, you had a question? Uh, that, uh, that, um, in justification, there was a part that was telling full justify. Full justify? Um, you can, that's single word justification. Now, what does that mean? Let me show you what that means. It's kind of weird. Let me see if I can, um, oh, let's see if I can explain this. When we justify type, we usually justify it so that the last line of the type aligns to the left. Okay? So this always aligns to the left. Now, if I told it I wanted all of them to be full justified, what sometimes it will do, sometimes it will stretch it out all the way across. Now, it didn't look like it's going to do that. Let me hit OK. No, it's not doing it. Let me try that again. If I do center, it doesn't seem to be working, so let me hit OK. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be working. Usually, these are what I use for that. So we have left, we have center, we have we have full justify, and then this one a lot. This one's not even justified. So usually, I use these these um, these buttons here for that. Yeah, it doesn't appear as if, and I'm not sure why, but it doesn't appear as if this makes any difference. So I usually just do a line left because that's normally what we do. Okay. okay, but it doesn't seem to override anything, so I'm not sure why they I have that in there. I was trying to see the difference, and then I didn't see it. Bye. Thank you, Taylor. Um, yeah. So we'll pick up on this. Uh, I'll quit the recording. It would be a good idea to do that. I'll pick up on this on uh, Wednesday. I gotta go visit. I gotta go visit somebody in my family now. <laughs>